Hello relatives, welcome to this week's Schlagbite entitled Bring in the Clowns for the week August 4th, 2000. Clowns have appeared in some manner in every culture since recorded history. These comic performers, characterized by outlandish costumes, flamboyant wigs and makeup, exist because they meet the needs of our humanity. Clowns operate outside of the rules of regular society. They make fun. They mock the sacred and the profane. Clowning is a culturally legitimate way to poke fun at authorities and symbols and be able to get away with it. I learned about the critical importance of clowning when I worked with the Hopi Indians for many years. They are a communal society whose ritualized clowning diffuses conflicts and anxieties that invariably occur in tightly knit groups. Laughing about our frailties reduces stress and ultimately builds community. Cultures that provide vehicles for laughing at itself seem to be more resilient. I seek out opportunities to clown, and the one that I never tried to miss is the Oregon Country Fair, OCF. And I've written about this before, you have a sense of my joy there. This year we made our annual Hippie Fest family reunion and pilgrimage with three generations. My wife and I, our three daughters, and my 16-year-old granddaughter. I had a twinge of misgiving at about uh, my granddaughter seeing me like this for five days until it became clear that who I am is already well known to her. The Oregon Country Fair family is a community of kindred spirits heavily into environmentalism, renewable energy, sustainable farming, alternative health care and lifestyles. There are poets, drummers, musicians, performers and platforms for serious discussion by nationally recognized experts. When the gates close at seven in the evening, the fair family gathers to play. And that's when I emerge as the truth fairy. I am a six foot six inch ballerina in pink tights, pink wig, a pink tutu, who strolls around the grounds engaging in intimate conversation. I am joined by Jimbo the Blueberry, a ballerina in blazing blue, who introduces me to the crowd. The Blueberry tells them that I'm going to tell people something they want to know, but until now we're afraid to ask and that the Truth Fairy is going to whisper in their ear something that they need to hear. This year we added another family member, a retired English teacher from a distinguished Connecticut Yankee family who found a pink flamingo hat for me that she thought would go beautiful with my fairy costume. Annie said she also wanted to join us and emerged in tight black shorts, black mesh tights, a black wig, and a 12-inch rhinestone-studded cigarette holder. She was Gypsy Rose Lee, disguised as Elvira, Queen of the Night. And after watching her fanny-shaking dance performance, we named her Tallulah Bunkbed. I say, let's bring in more clowns. Something happens to us when we dress ridiculously and suspend ourselves from our ordinary consciousness. In the safety of the ridiculous, people will play and laugh with you. They will even risk revealing their real selves. I keep thinking, what would happen if I wore the truth fairy to my office? But my wife says I have enough trouble maintaining credibility as it is. She also told me not to show you these pictures I am including, so you know I'm in trouble. But I am trusting that even the most conservative among you, my readers and listeners, are going to laugh. Have a wonderful week. Remember, we're all connected. Nobody makes it alone. We're only real when we play. For those of you interested in workshops, take a look at my website and the Turtle Island Project. We'll have a women's retreat. Look them up at turtleislandproject.com. Have a great week. I say this 
for all my relations, Mitakuyasi.